barbed wires. Now you could just imagine for two weeks down there the Filipinos and Americans didn't have any food to eat. And they did everything down there, no toilets, no privacy at all. They were under the scorching heat of the sun. Fortunately, no soldier died there because two Philippine scouts named Zuria and Australia, they were able to dig a spring or bukal, as we call it in Filipino. They drank from the spring, survived a two-week ordeal down there, after which the Japanese had transported these prisoners in barges. They were shipped to Manila and they arrived in Roas for the some part of Palanyake. There, they started another death march. There, uh, I'm sure you've heard about the death march that happened in Bataan, right? Now, in Bataan, approximately 76,000 Filipino and American soldiers were forced by the Japanese to do the march, starting off from Manipe. Oh, I'll tell you more about the death march in Bataan later. So, we're going to stop somewhere here in this part of the island. And... Uh, who accidentally discovered our country under the flag of Spain while doing the expedition to the Spice Islands. See, Magellan Paul was not Spanish, but Portuguese there. And then you end up here on this side, again, on your immediate uh, left, we have there the last bureau that depicts the ousting of our overstaying president, Ferdinand Marcos. We also honor here the first people power revolution of 1986, the original people power. Okay, before you go down, now uh, beside the flagpole, we have there the memorial of the Filipino guerrilla. Ito po yung resistance movement against the colonizers. And uh, you you see, this particular guerrilla was a farmer. So he was posing beside, he's posing beside his flock, he rifle, because he would always fight for the restoration of our freedom. But the Filipino guerrilla came from all walks of life. Some were doctors, lawyers, and teachers. Now, right here in front, dito po sa harapan natin, memorial po na uh, Philippine Commonwealth President, si Quezon. Quezon po arrived here in the island of Pudidor, December 24, 1941. This was an attack Japanese invasion. Si Quezon po transferred his office inside the Malinta Tunnel. Makikita niyo po ito mamaya, no? During the Light and Sound show. And, uh, Philippine Revolution Romano Pol Revolt Polaris Revolt Pagasanan Oh cool, Pagasanan Reporting live from Corregidor Island, and we're in the first tour stop of the tour in Corregidor. It's sa Saturday, November 24th, 2012, and behind me is the memorials and plaques of different rebellions that have happened over the years with many uh, colonizers from the past. Spain to the U.S. to Japan. Hopefully no more afterwards. Yeah. Philippine American War. Filipino Heroes Memorial here on the map. We're now moving towards this part here, and you're about to see the Japanese Garden of Peace, which was formerly the Japanese military cemetery. 
1942, the Japanese had won over the Filipino and American forces that occupied this island until 1945. 1945, liberation of the Philippines. And again, there was a battle that happened here in Corridor, like all the other parts of the uh, Philippines. And uh, this time, the Japanese were defeated. Uh, and for two weeks after the war, there were thousands of Japanese bodies scattered all over the island of Corridor. And the Filipinos did not want to touch these corpses. Well, it was understandable. Huh? But you know, the bodies were already decomposing, so it were the American soldiers who had thought of getting the Japanese soldiers here in the next stop. And then years after the war, the Americans left. Nobody knew where the Japanese soldiers were buried by the Americans because the place was covered by overgrown plants and trees. You know how they found out the location of this Japanese military cemetery? Only through a picture that they found in Oregon, USA, in the year 1985. They found a picture in a garage sale there, no? And uh, in this picture, there was an American officer who posed beside a uh, Japanese uh, uh, marker, Japanese military cemetery marker and right behind him was the silhouette of El Caballo. Now this American officer probably posed somewhere there on that part because right there on your far right is El Caballo Island. So that was how they located this Japanese military cemetery. In 1986 the Japanese government had learned about this, sent a group here and exhumed the bodies of these Japanese soldiers. They had a mass cremation and their ashes were sent back to Japan. So today this place is now being used as a praying area for the Japanese war veterans and their relatives. No more Japanese bodies buried here anymore, okay? And here on your, okay, here we have this gray marker. That's the Shinto Shrine. Shintoism is a religion of Japanese royalty. To the Japanese people, the emperor was a demigod. But after the war in 1945, his divinity was erased. And then here on your left, we have this monument dedicated to all the Filipino, American, and Japanese soldiers who had died on this island during the Wakayama assault, May 5, 1942. And on your far right behind this structure, we have the goddess of mercy. Ironically, this garden of peace is surrounded by Japanese anti-aircraft guns here on this side. No? But they're not the original locations of this gun. They were just placed here for the purpose of the memorial. And uh, okay, here in the complex we have uh, souvenir shops and restrooms and uh, 